I've been studying and planning and thinking for uh, days and weeks about the uh, absolute best routings for walking tours, for itineraries. And there's so many choices in New York City. And I've come up with uh, another winner, what I feel is going to be a very interesting walk. The weather's holding up this morning, so we're going to stick with plan A. And we'll do the walk this morning for about two hours. And then by 10, 10.30, uh, you'll be free to go shopping. You know, you can peel off at any time, of course. If you just want to come along for the first hour, hour and a half, you just peel off when you want to. Uh, we're talking about Madison Avenue. And then we're going to go down and have a few more blocks south to Park Avenue. And then for this afternoon, the plan is still uh, the visit to the American Museum of Natural History. For those who'd like to go up there, we can meet here at 3 p.m. in the lobby. That museum is open until 5.45. And we'll have a couple hours in the American Museum of Natural History. And then you'll be done. You'll be out of there by uh, 5.45 in position for your shows, for dinner tonight, you know, for whatever you have planned for this evening. And then tomorrow morning, uh, you know, normal schedule, breakfast at 7. And we start uh, at 8.30. Tomorrow morning, we're going to go uh, to Lower Manhattan. We'll take the subway down to the tip of the island. And then we'll take the uh, boat out to the Statue of Liberty. We'll have a close-up view of the statue. We'll go to Ellis Island. We'll walk on Wall Street tomorrow morning. Uh-huh, get your walking shoes on, I see. All right, raring to go. Ready for Central Park? So again, we'll just head out the front door. We'll take a right, and we will go north for four blocks to the park. Our Wellington Hotel is quite centrally located, 57th Street and 7th Avenue, just a block away from Carnegie Hall, a couple blocks south of Central Park. This is the lungs of the city. It's a great spot, 850 acres, designed by Frederick Law Olmsted. It looks like it's a natural park, as if they had found and discovered it in this condition, but in reality, everything you see was created by the landscape architects. They brought in 10 million cartloads of dirt. They planted 4 million trees. They brought in rocks. They brought in gravel, alpine plants, flowers. Fields and meadows were created where there had once been swamps and garbage dumps. Today, the park is a relaxing democratic arena where rich and poor alike can come in for recreation escaping from the concrete of the city. Just below the park is the Plaza Hotel, built in 1907 in a French Renaissance style and occupied ever since by the rich and famous. It was purchased in 1988 by Donald Trump, who poured in many of his millions to renovating it back to its former splendor. It's a deluxe pit like stop on our walking yeah. tour of Manhattan. You know, uh, Madison Avenue, what do you think of Madison Avenue? Advertising. Advertising. Well, they're still here. They, the men in the gray flannel suits, you'll see them around. But now mostly Madison Avenue is for shopping. This is the best street in New York City for shopping. For the small stores, the boutiques, the unusual stores, the knickknacks, all the way from here north for 20 blocks. From 60th Street to 80th Street is prime time for Madison Avenue. Starting right here at FAO Schwartz, the next door in the corner is Crate and Barrel. Again, we don't have that in Hawaii, and if you've never been in a Crate and Barrel, you really should find time to go in there. It's uh, housewares, fixtures, kitchen goods, glasses, furniture, great stuff in Crate and Barrel, and that's a big store there. And then on all the way up, all the way up, the little boutiques and things, even heading south from here on Madison is pretty interesting. Uh, what we're going to do is go down a block, and the IBM building is there. We'll take a look at that, and the Sony building. And then we're going to go over a couple blocks to Park Avenue, and then Lexington Avenue to the uh, City Corp Tower. And then we're, uh, we're pretty much done with the main part of the walk. So just another 30, 40 minutes. Now, this is a very civilized and sophisticated part of New York City. We're talking Midtown Manhattan in the mid-50s around Madison Avenue. The IBM building, it's like being outdoors in a bamboo forest. Leaving the IBM building, they've got an indoor atrium, heading for the Sony building now. 
The Sony building is located right at the corner of 57th Street and Madison Avenue, and they have got the Sony Wonder Technology Lab. It's free and open to the public. It opens at 10 o'clock every morning, and you want to get there right on time. Otherwise, you have to wait on a long line to get in because it's such an interesting and attractive exhibit. Inside, you'll find a variety of computers that you can play with, and the theme in general is the media. There's audio engineering, audio editing, you can do special effects. You can just look around at this high-tech wonderland. They have uh, scientific laboratories in here that the kids can play with hands-on. And it's in a great neighborhood. Just a block away on Park Avenue, you'll find Lieber House, built in 1952, a very radical glass box skyscraper, the first one in the city. The City Corp Tower, another of the innovative buildings, is the Seagram Building, also on Park Avenue, built in 1958. Mies van der Rohe, one of the great architects who put that up. Great shopping nearby, there's Cartier, we're over on 5th Avenue now. Let's just take a bit of a wander and have a look at the sights of the city. Here's a mother in Manhattan. You've got to be very capable to raise a kid in the midst of these concrete canyons. Another view of St. Patrick's Cathedral from the backside. We're standing in the grounds of the Villard House. This was an annex of St. Patrick's. It's built in the Italian Renaissance style. It looks like a palazzo. It's been taken over by a hotel chain and they've added this gigantic modern top to the old New York Villard houses. It's now the New York Palace Hotel. The Cirque 2000 restaurant is inside. The Roosevelt Hotel is an excellent choice for the businessmen. It's located at Madison and 45th near Grand Central Station. Not in the most center of locations for tourists, but for the business traveler, it's excellent. It's got a thousand rooms. It's been newly renovated. Beautiful marble lobby with fresh floral displays. Hotels in New York are not cheap because everybody wants to come to New York. It's one of the world's top visitor destinations. Now we're just wandering in the Midtown area, Madison Avenue, Park Avenue, over to Fifth Avenue. We're going to show you the mid-40s, the mid-50s, Bryant Park. We'll show you a little bit of the skyscrapers as well. There's the great Chrysler Building. It too was briefly the world's tallest structure until it was eclipsed by the Empire State Building. Telephoto compression gives you some idea of the hustle bustle of Midtown Manhattan. Lunch hour, it's a beautiful fall afternoon. Everybody is out for a stroll, looking for food, looking at the sights. So this is New York today. It's an extremely busy place. Go, go, go. And yet in the midst of the urban chaos, we find many havens of tranquility, such as the New York Public Library. This is a great spot for the scholars. Inside, it's quiet. There's millions of books in there. It's the second largest library in America, after the Library of Congress in Washington. And right behind the Public Library is Bryant Park. This place has been revived back in the 50s and 60s it was a derelict weed filled junkyard with junkies and criminals and nowadays it's a place for all of the yuppies the business people come here on their lunch break and enjoy the pleasant greenery there's also concerts outdoors frequently at bryant park surrounded by all of the high rises right in the midst of Manhattan. We're about 42nd Street and 5th Avenue here. This is the peak of the urban density of New York. And Bryant Park gives you a little bit of space. In front of many of the buildings, you have little plazas, little sculptures here and there. It's a working class city, constantly in motion. They've got stores of every variety here from A to Z. If anything has ever been made and is available for sale, you can find it in New York. Great way to get around town, of course, is the subway system. It'll take you everywhere. They've got about 800 miles of tracks. And it's taking us to the American Museum of Natural History. They've got fabulous dioramas here. They've got all kinds of scientific displays. 
Here's a 3D look through the human body. The gemstone collection is fabulous. They've got jades, they've got diamonds and rubies. They've also got meteorites that have fallen from outer space. There's something for everybody in the American Museum of Natural History. The theme here is evolution. In particular, human evolution gets a special focus. Here we see some of our ancestors. We see some Mayan and Central American Indian artifacts here. They have a large collection of dioramas showing the cultures of the world. They have these little miniatures. This is the Ainu culture of northern Japan. And they have the artifacts and the implements of everyday life on display at the museum. It's almost like stepping into these native villages. Here's a Malaysian native surrounded by rice terraces. We have Alexandria in ancient Egypt reconstructed in a small 3D diorama. Ancient walled cities of Japan and China and the Middle East, Uzbekistan. We have all kinds of exotic cultures on display in the museum as well as outside the windows of the museum. There's ships models, there's Arabians, there's Turks, and yes, there's bones. They have the largest collection of dinosaurs on exhibit any place in the world. And the dino halls have recently been renovated. They're all air conditioned now. And they've reconfigured the bones and the skeletons to give you a much more accurate view of what the life of the dinosaurs was probably like. Although, as we know, this is a constant changing field of scientific study. Here's T-Rex in a low charge. They've got a new view of this animal as a fast-moving biped running 35 miles an hour, chasing down its prey and chomping in them with its huge bone-crushing jaw. You'll find that most of the fourth floor is dedicated entirely to dinosaurs. There are several large galleries that document the Indians of the eastern woodlands and the plains of the United States and Canada from the prehistoric times right up until the early 20th century. The Eastern Woodlands Hall is organized thematically and includes displays of clothing, houses, warfare, cooking, and fishing. There's beautiful displays of costumes from the tribes of Canada and New England and the Eastern Seaboard. We have models of their tribal homes. Uh, we have canoes, actual birch bark canoes and some beautiful clothing that gives you an idea of the high style of garments these people were wearing. There's also a large hall of Mexico and Central America, man in Africa, birds of the world. It just goes on and on. They have 36 million items inside that museum. So we've had a good look around at them and now we're out of the museum walking on the Upper West Side over to Zabar is one of our favorite food shops in the world. They have a fantastic array of gourmet delicacies at Zabar's. You can pick them up for a picnic for the next day or for something to bring home. Back into the subways. Actually, it looks like this is all happening in one day. We're compressing our visit for the program. This is our next morning. We're out bright and early after breakfast to head down to Lower Manhattan. On this day, we're going to ride the ferry boat out to the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island. The easiest way is take the subway down to the Whitehall Street Station, and then you walk just another block across the street over to Clinton Park and Battery Park, and there you board the ferry boat. Here's a tip, get there early in the day. If you can be on the boat by nine o'clock, you'll be in good shape and beat the crowds that come in later in the morning. And enjoying a fabulous view. We have a great view of Lower Manhattan as well. We're not going to be getting off the boat at the Statue of Liberty because that takes quite a long time and we have many things yet to do in the rest of the day. Quick glimpse at Ellis Island. We're passing it on our way to the statue and we'll be returning and getting off the boat at Ellis Island to have a look at their display. She lifts her lamp besides the golden door the place where the immigrants of the world streamed into America. 
The inscription on the statue reads, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. We're all celebrating American freedom with Lady Liberty. It was designed by a French sculptor named Bartholdi, and the metal superstructure that holds her up was designed by Gustave Eiffel. Arriving at Ellis Island, this is where many arrivals to America from Europe first landed and were processed through the immigration station of Ellis Island. It was opened in 1892 and it stayed in business until about 1954. And then it was shut down for a long period of time and it's been renovated and reopened as a free museum of American immigration. Their displays are really impressive. They've got multimedia, video, there's large photographs, there's three-dimensional graphics showing the demographics of the population. They have the actual examining rooms that were in use at that time. There's medical displays and a special display in this case of America's concentration camps, the Japanese internment during World War II. And we have some of the original suitcases and steamer trunks that the immigrants brought with them on their way to a new life. And then back on the boat for this short ride, it takes about 15 minutes.